check this out. We've got something really fun today. This is so amazing. Math and math. Oh man, again? 1.4, combining inverse and other transformations. I've got this acronym here so that we know in what order to apply transformations. So F just stands for first, as in first you do inverses is I. R is reflections, S is for stretches, and T is for translations. Now you know that uh, translations can come before stretches and vertical stuff can come before horizontal or the other way around. But here's a nice acronym to remember that inverse comes before all of these. Let's see how this might work. Let's sketch f of x and this transformed function. So it looks like f of x is a quadratic and with a vertex at 6, 0. And it's got a domain restriction here. x is greater than or equal to 6, which is its vertex. So we know it has a point here and then here and then here and then here. And that's probably good enough. We'll connect those points there. The graph continues on, and this would be f of x. Now let's draw this transformed graph. And there's a y now inside the function, and that means inverse. Okay, so we could do this on the graph. Um, and apply the inverse first and then this translation next. But what is this translation? Let's rearrange this so we can see more easily what this minus 2 here is. Now we know that if we take the inverse function on both sides, then we can get rid of the function on this side. And that means we've got the inverse function here. So f inverse of x is equal to y minus 2. And now if I rearrange it, I'm going to put y on the left here. y is equal to the inverse function of x. And when I move this over to the other side with the f inverse, then I'm going to make it plus 2. And now it's more easily seen that this is a shift up to units. Now why did it say minus here then with the y? Well once we're working inside the function then these numbers have the opposite effect. So here's the new function. It would have been inversed up here to 0, 6 and then shifted up to units. So the new point would be here. And then it goes like this and this and and this. And there's that transformed graph. x equals f of y minus 2. Now let's find the equation of the transformed function and its mapping notation. So first, let's find the inverse. So before we had y equals, now we'll have x equals, it was uh, x minus 6, so now we'll have y minus 6, all squared. Now let's solve this one for y. So we'll take the square root of both sides here, and we get plus or minus root x is equal to y minus 6. And the plus or minus comes from square rooting this side where we have a variable squared. Let's move the 6 over there and also at the same time switch sides. So I'm going to put y is equal to plus or minus root x plus 6. And that would be the inverse. Now there was one more thing though and that is on the original function. We had a domain restriction of 
x is greater than or equal to 6. So when I do the inverse and I switch x and y, I need to switch the domain and range as well. So this would now be y is greater than or equal to 6. Now, if I'm looking at this right here, I get plus and minus. That would give me a sideways parabola. The plus would give me this, and the minus would give me this side. We want y is greater than 6 only, so we only want the positive. So we don't want the minus here. Okay, so we will get rid of that. Now we need to do the shift two units up. So, all right, translation up, and that would be y is equal to the square root of x plus 8. And that would be our new transformed function in terms of x and y. And now you can see why it would start here at 8 and just move this way, like a square root of x, translated up 8 units. Mapping notation x and y is mapped on 2. Now the first thing that happens is x and y are switched. So we'll switch them. And then there's a translation of two units up. And this is our y values that we need to translate up to units. So we go x plus 2. If f of x is vertically stretched by a factor of 3, inversed, horizontally reflected in the y-axis, and shifted four units left, to create g of x, what is the equation of g of x in terms of f of x? Now, they're just giving us a bunch of transformations. We need to apply them in the correct order. This just says and. If it gave an order like first it was vertically stretched and then inversed and then, then they're giving us an order that we need to follow. But since it just says and, it's just listing off a bunch. So we'll have to put them in the right order ourselves. So g of x is equal to, it's vertically stretched, so we can put that outside. It, we're going to take the inverse of it, so I'll put f inverse. Assuming that the inverse is a function, and we can't tell because we don't have f of x to look at. Next, we're going to reflect it in the y-axis, so I'll put a negative here and shift four units left, so we'd have x plus four. And there's our equation of g of x in terms of f of x. What's the mapping notation? We've got x and y mapped on to negative for the reflection, y because uh, we're doing the inverse, and minus four because we're shifting four units left and vertical stretch by a factor of three and x because we did the inverse. And so there is the mapping notation for all these transformations. Let's move on and look at some diploma exam style questions. So we have the graph of f of x shown here it is transformed into the graph of g of x by reflecting in the x-axis and translating up four units. And we're looking for the range of g of x in interval notation. So first, let's do this question from the graph. So it would start here, go up and down if we were to reflect in the x-axis. Now let's shift this up four units, and it would look something like that. Now, we can just read the range off of this graph now that we've done the transformations. So our range, our minimum range value would be, looks like it keeps going on down forever. And so no minimum, we'd start with uh, round bracket negative infinity. So greater than negative infinity. And looks like our maximum is four, so less than or equal to four. So square bracket here with the four. We could also do this question using mapping notation. So we have x and y is mapped on to, nothing happens to the x's, but the y's here are reflected and shifted up for units. Now we can take the range values from the original f of x here 
and just use this part of our mapping notation. So before we had a minimum of zero. And if we run it through these transformations, that would turn into four. Our maximum here was no maximum, so infinity. And if we put infinity through these transformations, negative infinity plus four, negative infinity plus four is just negative infinity. Now this was the minimum before, so don't write this as the minimum now because four is larger than negative infinity here. So rearrange it like this, and that would be our answer. Now we see that that would be D in this case. A student is asked to draw the inverse of each of the following graphs. If no additional restrictions are given, which two graphs above will have an inverse that is a function? So we need a graph that will pass the horizontal line test. So this one will. Uh, this one will not. This one will. And this one will not. So it looks like graphs one and three. The function y equals f of x is drawn entirely in quadrant two as shown below. Three new functions will be drawn that are transformations of this function f of x. For each function below, identify the quadrant which its graph will be completely drawn. A quadrant number may be used once, more than once, or not at all. First one looks like we're going to take f of x here and shift it vertically down by eight units. If we look at this, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So the maximum point here is six. So shifting it down by eight units puts it completely into quadrant three. And they're very nice. They have labeled the quadrant numbers here for you. So it looks like the first one here is quadrant three. Next one looks like we shift left eight units. Now that's interesting because we're already in quadrant two and shifting eight units to the left here keeps us in quadrant two. So this will be quadrant two. And this is a horizontal reflection over the y-axis. So this image will be reflected over here into quadrant one. The graph of f of x is stretched vertically by a factor of one ninth about the x-axis, stretched horizontally by a factor of one seventh about the y-axis, and then translated eight units down. These transformations can be described by mapping notation. We've got m, n, and p there. Possible values for m, n, and p are listed below. Okay, so the first vertical stretch we have here is one over nine, and that will be our n value. So n is one over nine. Next we've got horizontal stretch by a factor of one over seven. That means right here in um, mapping notation, we want the verbal description to match our mapping notation. And so we're looking for one over seven to be our M value here. And last is P. So P is eight units down. So this needs to be minus eight. And that would be this one here. Now, using these reference numbers, we're doing m first, so that would be 1. n is next, so that would be 2. And then 6. This was part of relations and functions 5 and 6, inverses and reflections, and also some more review at the end. Here's some questions from the textbook. Try them out, see if you know what you're doing.